This country, this is a country where tradition has been maintained. It's, this, it's, it's broken down in many places. People are very confused. But if you come to Turkey, there's much less confusion about what religion is. And the reason for that is that they protected the, this tradition. Their ulama did not allow these alien forces to come in and divide and conquer them. Because Allah says, وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا We forget that it's a prohibition to become sectarian in the Qur'an. It's a prohibition. There's nahi عن التفرق. Allah says, وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا How did the Muslims do that? They had no synods. They had no magisterium. They had no councils. How did they do that? If you look at, uh, if you look at the Jews, the Jews have certain rabbinical councils that meet together and decide what's orthodoxy and what's not. If you look at the Christians, they had councils. They had the Council of Nicaea, the Council of Chaldea. They had the Council of Alexandria. They had all these different councils. They come together and they meet and their bishops discuss what's going to be doctrine. And they hash it out. And then they come to certain agreements and some of them disagree, they become heretics or heterodoxic. Right? And that's how the religion... The Muslims had none of that. There's no councils. There's no synods. There's no magisterium. How did they come to these agreements? This is a miracle of Islam. The providential hand that is taking care of this religion is so evident to anybody that's willing to openly look at it. How did they agree that there were... Uh, the Sunni community agree there are four basic madhab. How did they agree to that? Despite the fact we had dozens of madhabs. What happened to Layth? Really, where's Sufyan al These were great fuqaha, but their ways died out. Where's Imam al -Zai? Where's Abu Dawud al -Zahiri? Why Malik, Abu Hanifa, Shafi'i, and, Abu Hani uh, and Ahmad? Why these four? These are the people that Allah, and it's not that the others were less than them, but for whatever hikmah, Allah chose these four to be the canonical schools of the Sunni tradition and the Ja'fari in the, in the Shia tradition. This is a miracle of Islam. To do this and to have them accept each other. The fact that they had four nihrab in the Kaaba is a miracle of Islam. That they weren't fighting each other. And, and if, the, if the Maliki was late for his Dhuhr uh, prayer, he would, uh, if, I'm sorry, if the Shafi'i was late for the Dhuhr prayer, he would pray with the Malikis. If the Shafi'i, the Hanafi, and the Hanbali were late for their uh, Asr prayer, they would pray with the Hanafis. If they were late for their Fajr prayer, they would pray with the Hanafis. And this, this wasn't because they were sectarian, they had one mihrab in Medina. People say, oh look, they got to a point, there was so much sectarianism, they had four madhab. No, it's pre-microphone. You know, Kaaba is a big place. They didn't, there, there, there was space for everybody. And that was the Sa'at al-Sudur. They had big breasts. And they let everybody uh, pray there. Each madhab was honored. The Hanafi obviously got the biggest one because the majority were Hanafi. And the Shafi'i at one point also very big. The Maliki small and then the Hanbali was very small because there were very few Hanbalis. But each was honored. And then in the Aqidah, you look at the Aqidah schools that were transmitted. The, the lots of debates. How did they agree on these things? Undeniably, there were periods of fitnah and, and we went through uh, similar problems that other religions have had. But how did they arrive to these agreed upon things? This is not to deny that there are people, dissenters. There, there are. And they, if, they were, if they were of a caliber that the other ulama recognized their right to dissent, they would acknowledge it. But if they were heretics, they would call it what it was. Right? Heraseya is a Greek word, zandaka is used in Arabic, but harasaya in Greek means to choose for yourself. A heresy is where you pick and choose your religion. You don't accept what's transmitted, what's agreed upon. And, and so in the Aqidah, this, this is what they came. They, they came to, to, to the, the, the Ash'ari, the Maturidi. This, uh, the Ottoman Dawla was Maturidi. The Muhammad al-Fatih, he came into this city and conquered this city. The Prophet praised him. He said, Ni'm al-Amir. He said, Ni'm al wa Ni'm al-Amir. Ni'm al-Amir wa Amiruhum wa Ni'm al Jayshuhum. What a blessed Amir is their Amir and what a blessed army is their army. He was, by consensus, Hanafi, 
ما تريدي النقشبندي. So the Prophet was praising a Hanafi, ما تريدي النقشبندي. And people say, Bid'ah, Mubtada'ah. Astaghfirullah, would the Prophet praise a Mubtada'ah? He would never praise a Mubtada'ah. And yet we know he praised the conqueror of this city. He said, Ni'm al Amir. Ni'ma is the way the Arabs say the best. That's the best Amir, their Amir. And he would never praise worldly things, not like uh, he was a great general, which he was. No, he was praising his Iman. He was praising his Aqidah. He was praising his practice because he was Imamun Adil and Sab'atun Yadhinuhum Allah Yom Allah Dhulla Illa Dhulluhum. Seven are. are given the shade of Allah on the day of judgment when there's no shade except Allah's shade. The first, the first, Imamun Adil, a just ruler. That's how high their maqam is. A high ruler. The dhikr of the, the umara is Adil. That's their dhikr, to practice justice. They don't have to do a lot of subha, even though he did, or do a lot of tilawa, even though he did. They don't have to do any of that. If they're just, that's their dhikr. And they reach these high maqams. So that was who he praised. So this transmission, and then the, the third area, this is Iman, Islam, and Ihsan. How did they agree on the way of Imam al-Junaid? Imam al-Junaid is Imam by consensus. Imam al-Ta'ifatayn. No Sunni can yata'anu fi... Dr. Omar, you're here. He's a much greater scholar than I am. You know, I'm at Safarullah, not even put my name under scholarship, but student of knowledge. But Dr. Omar, Imam al Junaid, anybody disagree on him from the Sunni tradition? Do you know? Nobody. Ibn Taymiyyah praises him, everybody praises him. He's Imam al Ta'ifatayn. He was a great scholar in, in, the, in, 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 in his madhab of Thawri, he was a great scholar, and he was a great uh, Sufi. And his tasawwuf spread because one of his students was the single most important narrator of Abu Dawood's uh, Musnad. So when, when Abu Dawood, the Sunan of Abu Dawood, when he went to Mecca and began transmitting the Hadith, he taught Imam Junaid's uh, teaching there and it spread all over the world. So in Morocco, the little children, they learned fi aqtara sha'ari wa fi qimarik wa fi tariqat al-Junaid al-Sadiq. And that's what they all learned. The, the aqid of Imam al-Ash'ari, the fiqh of Imam Malik, and the, the way of Imam al-Junaid. And this was Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. And people say, you know, wh wh where is that? Where is tasawwuf in Islam? Where is the, the word? The, it's a technical term. It's a technical term. Just like mantiq, kalam, fiqh. Fiqh is a technical term. People forget that. All the hadith in which the Prophet uses fiqh, he did not mean jurisprudence. He meant understanding. مَنْ يُرِيدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرٍ يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ He gives them an understanding of the religion. They use it later and the books of fiqh always begin with that hadith because it's تَفَاؤُلًا تَبَرُّكًا But the original meaning of that, you look in the commentaries of hadith, it meant يُفَهِّمُهُ فِي الدِّينِ And the Sahaba knew that رُبَّ حَامِرِي فِقْهٍ لَيْسَ بِفَقِيهِ Sometimes somebody who walks around with a lot of information in his head isn't a faqih. They have all the outward, uh, what Imam al-Ghazali calls al-mutarassimun.